Monday, May 18th, uh, 2020, Berlin Select Board meeting to order. With us is Justin Lawrence, Flo Sm Smith, um, John Quinn. On the computer is Angelina Capron. And with us also is Dana Hadley, Town Administrator, and Diane Isabel, Town Treasurer. Uh, additions or changes to the agenda right now. Um, yes, I'm, I'm going to ask to talk about the schedule, uh, to talk about the highway superintendent position. Let me just ask those out in radio land, can you hear us? Maybe. Wave if you can hear us. Oh, okay. Um, we can hear you well. I don't know if this will help. But I know I couldn't hear you guys at all on Wednesday. Yeah. Really, I think it's really made for that person sitting right in front of it. Yeah. So it might. Yeah. As much as you know, we all want to be on camera. It might be best if you just sit with it in front of you. <laughs> all right. <laughs> or Brad, but in front of him. <laughs> no. 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 Anything else on changes to the agenda? No, thank you. Uh, public comment. Hearing none. Uh, Treasurer's report, Diane. I've given each one of you a two-pager and it says bill is introduced in front of the Senate House. I've put that on your, each one of you on your desk. On the second page, it talks about uh, number two, establish a grace period for decrease or waive uh, penalty or interest on fees imposed. Okay, that was voted by this legislature. I understand that uh, Governor Scott has accepted that. So if you want to uh, move penalty or not charge it or whatever. So but I would tell you, as of right now, um, the taxes will do obviously on Friday. And right now the past dues are 353,148. Normally I always get 15 to 30 people every after every quarter they don't pay. So normally we're at the $280,000 range. But this is 353,000. And 45,000 of it is businesses that normally pay every single time. Uh, some of them are restaurants, and I have even an insurance company that didn't pay. They might not be open. So I guess all I'm telling you is that we do have $353,000 worth of outstanding um, payments right now. And I'm asking, do you want to waive the penalty or interest? Because I do have people that are calling me and they would like to send out past due bills this week. So if I have to charge penalty, that's fine. I just want to know what direction you're going. What's the um, what's the penalties and interest on that three hundred and fifty three thousand? Okay, well, the penalties and interest, the part, the penalty itself is just going to be based on the fourth quarter, and that is based on. Okay, so the past due for the. Okay, it's probably four, because we're so far away, Angelina. Um, Diane's giving her report right okay. at the moment. So right now, the fourth the fourth quarter is one hundred and forty nine thousand five eighty seven fifty five. Yeah, I don't That's know if I can due. help you with it, so I'll try and help keep you abreast where we are. Okay, so the penalty on that would be 11967 if I was to charge that tomorrow. And then there would be an additional almost okay. 2, 000, or, 11, okay. or $1,200 for interest, because it's 1% interest on top of that. So I would still I would still charge interest on the past due portion from before, because we're at like 211000 and that really has nothing to do with this part. Okay. So I'm just asking on the new, how would you let me handle that? Well, I would think that, I mean, these businesses that are, that are current and up to date, I mean, if they're having troubles now, I wouldn't be hesitant about forgiving the uh, penalty. Are you talking forgiving or just pushing it back to like July, June 15th, giving them an extra month? Can you do either or? I can you, do either or whatever you say. Well, I mean, you got to remember that these businesses have been in town for a fair number of years and they have really 
kept our tax rates. And I don't see as we should be burdening them any more than we absolutely have to. Any other ideas on this? Well, I'm curious if, if it could be split out or if there's opportunity to say, you know, any of these businesses or, you know, people that have always historically been um, have a good track record uh, for giving them or, or pushing it back uh, for a month, but the, the people maybe that it's, it's always late, I, you know, why would we necessarily be forgiving that? I don't, I don't know if you can do that. That's the thing I'm saying. Can we do it? You know, we can't discriminate. You know, I hear what you're saying, and, I, and it's not just, you know, it's not my decision, but I, I just don't think I can discriminate. Yeah, but you're still going to be getting, they're still going to be paying interest and penalty on the what is uh, delinquent now. I mean, for this payment. Well, penalty is only a one-time thing. You don't pay that quarter, you get penalty yeah. just for that one quarter alone. Then it's over and you keep paying the interest. Okay. Um, so they're not going to be paying. The ones that haven't paid will not pay additional penalty, but just pay additional interest. Yeah. Um, what were your choices, Diane? You can either wait, put a date We can, uh, we can yeah, go ahead and wait forward. a date, or you can say no. Or so in other words, you could you could pick a date and not charge interest and until that time. Uh, until that time. Yeah, that and penalty is. would would there be a penalty appropriate with this, or did you say that comes only once a year? No, the penalty is every quarter. So for the people that didn't pay this quarter, there would be that, a penalty. There would be that penalty, and then you could decide. We could move it to June fifteenth, or you could not. You know, we could even. You know, okay. And the other option was to forgive it entirely. You could. That'd so. I mean, sure what, what, what you're saying is if we if we move it to June 15th, they have a grace period of one month. Correct. And if they don't pay it by June 15th, well, then they get penalty and interest again. Now, at that time, could we decide not to charge the penalty? Yeah, according to everything I've read here. Okay. Yeah. That'd be more Sounds, in favor of pushing it out. Yeah, pushing it out a month and giving and people a chance. I mean, it, I mean, the office is up. Maybe there's some circumstances that we don't know about as to why they haven't been able to pay them, you know. Yeah. So maybe if you pushed it out a month and then come June, you'd ha you'd know you could, could come back and, and update. Yeah. I could ask you again. Do we count on that revenue as part of our revenue projection? No. Okay. And you know, really the majority is paid. 353 for, for what's going on right now to me is extraordinarily good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yes, we have enough money in the count to pay the school taxes and to be very comfortable until the end of July. We do anticipate the revenue of interest and delinquent. Yeah, I still but charge the interest regardless. Yeah. That's 1%. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I would make a motion that we um, delay. Let's see how I want to run the so both penalty and interest or one or the other? Or? Um, penalty and interest on the fourth quarter. So I'd make a motion that we uh, postpone collection of penalties and interest until June 15th for the fourth quarter. Second. Any further discussion on this? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Anything else, Diane? Uh, Diane? Oh, you know, just like I started telling you, um, cash-wise, we're, we're in good shape. I really we collected a lot more than I was anticipating. And I, like I said, I can pay the school, and, you know, we're just, I'm feeling comfortable about it. I, if I wasn't, I'd be telling you, hey, you know, this is not good, but uh, I think we're in good shape. And I think that's really good to news and very good for the, um, a lot of our residents really made certain that they paid. And I appreciate that. That's all I've got. Okay. Um, thank you very much, Diane. Uh, approval of licenses, permits, vouchers, and applications. Are, are you ready, ready to, to do that? The hard copies are there too. We want to the hard copies. Well, since we haven't looked at, has everybody looked at these? Um, yeah, Dana, do you have the packet info? 
and I asked where it be. I just gave it to you. I didn't. I didn't print all those out. Do you want me to print that out? Well, I did the hard copies. The hard copies right here. On That'd that. be great. Yeah. Well, I see those from there. I would wait to the end, Brad, probably. Mm -hmm. That gives okay. time for Just, folks to read Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um, are we going for this? Uh, Pam DeAndra Andres and right. So we have Pam and we have Andres here, and I'm going to move them over here just because I want to. And hopefully they can hear us a little bit, and hopefully we can hear them. So they are reporting. Andres, it's very difficult to, for um, Dana. It's very difficult for Andres and I to hear what's going on. Um, yeah, I don't know how I can help. I'm wondering you. if uh, I'm trying my best. If folks wanted would call into the Zoom number, we'd be able to hear. Or just get next to the mic. Or just get next to the mic. One way or the other. Uh, okay. One way or the I other. Guess you can do either way. <laughs> yeah. Can you hear us? Yeah. I can, but I'm standing right here. <laughs> we can't hear anyone. I can anybody. hear you fine. I can hear yeah. you, Flo, but, yep. and I've heard Dana before, but I can't hear it. And I can hear the person on the call, but I can't hear We can't hear anybody in the room. So they're not able to hear the other That's right. true for me as well. Because we're right here. Mm -hmm. And because you're that yours. And, mm -hmm. Yeah. So should we just postpone this then? What's the call in number? That's the other thing that's on the cell phones there. Well, we can dial in too and just. That's what I mean. Just be silent. Your speaker. And then they'll be able to hear us. And if that's loud enough, we'll be able to hear them. Okay, they're going to call in. Yeah. Are you ready for it? <laughs> One six four six five five eight eight six five six. Um, yeah, five five seven six four nine. If you need the meeting ID, just yell. What's the meeting number? Eight seven one. Four one eight three five three seven. Enter your participant ID followed by pound. Otherwise, check. Please enter the meeting password followed by pound. Now. There are seven. Do I need to hear? This is Justin. Can you hear me now? I need to meet you. Okay. Hello. Hello. This, this is, is Justin. Justin. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear yep. you. That's good. Can you, can you hear me? Yep. Perfect. All right. Thanks for your patience. Nice. For anybody else we need to include? Brad, I see you're also, and he can hear you. Tell me, tell me when you're ready. You're all set to go. Go ahead. Okay. Well, thank you for having um, us tonight and thank you for figuring out the technology. Um, I'm Pam D'Andrea with Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission. And we have Andres Chorizo here from Watershed Consulting Associates. And um, Central Vermont hired Andres' team on behalf of uh, Berlin to finalize three stormwater designs um, and if you folks may remember, we did a um, 
a call a while back on three of the sites at, that were at the 60% stage. Um, the chimney sweep, fireplace shop, the Berlin Elementary School, and the Berlin Fire Station. And we've gone through the 90% stage and um, Andres and his team have made a few modifications, not to the chimney sweep, that one's pretty much the same, um, but we can go over that again as well tonight, just to refresh your memories, and um, made some modifications based on feedback um, from the team at the elementary school, as well as the fire station, and needing to um, adjust things a little bit at both sites, just to make the plans work, um, and I'll let Andres give you the details on that but just wanted to bring you up to date where we are and let you folks know that this is the final design. And um, as they stand now, uh, Andres and Andres is gonna share his screen here, but he and his team are gonna um, finish these up by the end of the month. And then we will be able to um, have these on file to pursue other funding once it's available for implementation. And uh, I can talk more about that if later if folks have questions on funding sources. Um, but right now I'll, I'll let Andres talk it over. It looks like he has on his screen the um, plans for the elementary school as well as the fire station combined um, on one plan sheet. So thanks Andres and I'll, right. I'll let you take it over now. Great, all right, so can you guys hear me okay? Yeah. 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 So, and I assume everybody can see the plan here. So I guess just to give the introduction um, to this project, you know, we were looking to um, design a stormwater improvement for the school and the fire station, basically maximize the um, benefit in terms of the water quality improvement, um, and also to maximize benefit towards this future three acre rule requirement, which is gonna be um, uh, uh, a permit requirement in the future, which is gonna be, um, <clears throat> be required for the school and the fire station to basically apply these, you know, the treatments in the future down the road. So we, we were trying to maximize the benefit towards those, towards that new rule. And just to kind of walk you through, I think the um, elements of, of the design, you know, basically we have the, the unpaved parking lot over here on the Eastern side. And so that was, um, that was a pretty key focus of ours. We were trying to pick up the water, which is draining off of the parking lot. And you can see right along the Eastern edge of that, we have a swale which comes and it's basically designed to collect any of the water from the parking lot, and bring it into the swale. And then um, the swale then brings water down to a new pipe system. You can see down at the bottom here. I'm not sure if Dana has the hard copy plans. I can also zoom in a little bit too, so you can see. Um, essentially right over the bank, we have a new swale. And then this black line right here, this is a new pipe system. And then this is gonna be what's called a bioretention area. So this is essentially just a, a planted landscape garden. And we have a planting plan for this, um, which currently is in draft, um, but here it is right here. We have a bunch of different types of wetland species planted in this garden. Um, so essentially this thing is designed to look um, look nice and it's but it's also a place where stormwater can collect and then drain out and eventually drain out to this swale which runs um, right here the access road crosses so this is feature number one on the property feature number two is also the same exact type of bioretention but it's it's over here next to the just to the north of, of the fire station and this is designed to pick up the runoff uh, from the fire station. So from the, the south parking lot, the water is actually picked up in a new catch basin right here on the corner. And then a new pipe brings it to the north here into this um, bioretention area. And then there's some new swales right along here, which are designed to pick up the water from the northern half of the parking lot um, and then drain it into this bioretention area. So that's the, um, the second uh, project on the on the site and that and again it's it's designed 
as a, um, a landscape feature. Here's the planting plan here. So, you know, as it stands right now, you know, there's some red osier, dogwood, little shrubbery stuff along the edge. Um, any of these circles you see here are kind of shrub type species. And then where there's orange, where the swales come in and then along the bottom, that's gonna be more of like herbaceous wetland type flowering vegetation, uh, which grows up in there. So designed to look attractive, hopefully, and um, you know, recognizing that people that are driving in from the school are gonna see it. So we definitely wanted to make it look attractive. Um, so those are the, I mean, that's the main point. And Pam, am I missing anything? You think I should expand on anything at all? Or is that a good point? Um, I think just maybe you wanna mention just a little bit about you know, how the school wants to pave their lot and yeah. um, how they're working with Grenier on that and, you know, the spaces that we're really not going to lose parking or anything um, by, you know, from that uh, um, along the side there. Definitely. And, uh, yeah, that's yeah, a good just, point. Just speak to the, the parking lot piece and um, what else was I thinking? Yeah, because I think that was that was one thing that um, – the school district was really trying to coordinate, but you know, it might, given the timing and funding and all of that, it might not work exactly to plan. But given COVID nineteen, they may not be able to pave anyway. So I'm not really sure where that's at at this point. Yeah. So what? So Pam's talking about, you know, the school. Basically, this is a a problem area anyway, and you know, we understand. We've been kind of working with the school as they've tried to advance a project here to pave this lot. And, um, you know, essentially we worked with them to make sure that their parking needs were met in terms of like up, up in this area, you can see we actually have some spaces designated and we have, um, you know, we preserved kind of an open space here in front of this existing access drive, which they needed. We took a very small amount of the edge of the parking lot away on the east side. You can see it says new edge of gravel. There's a little bit of a, a recess there and we worked with them on that. We did um, still maintaining, you know, 20 feet from the edge of the uh, parking stall. And, and, and then I guess down here, it's actually a little bit more. It's about 20 feet. So we worked with them on, on these, on these, you know, adjustments to the parking lot. And they, um, I think ultimately, you know, it's going to provide more structure to the parking lot anyway, in terms of when they, when they actually go ahead and pave this. And, you know, we've, we, we've kind of designed this so that they, they actually also need a stormwater permit for this work. And it's a little, it's a little confusing, <laughs> but Essentially, even if we were not involved at all, they would have to do this project, there would have been a need to do a stormwater permit. So essentially we've designed things so that we, sh we should be meeting those requirements for them. So it's kind of like we're kind of stepping in and helping them implement something which would have had to been really done anyway. So I think it's gonna work out pretty well. And I think as Pam was saying, it's just more of a question of the timing, whether or not it's going to work for them to actually do this this year. I, and I don't know, I don't really have an update on that. I know we just kind of did things as fast as we could and kind of gave it to them so that they could try to get permitted through the state. But I don't know what their ultimate decision was in terms of whether they had time or not to do it. Do you folks have any questions about the um, whatever changes may have happened since we last um, saw the designs or any additional comments or questions that you might have? No, I, I just had trouble hearing you for a second. What it, who's waiting on what permit from the state? Um, it, was, it was in the last, last couple of sentences that that you were just speaking about. I, I just couldn't hear it that well. I, I, so I think, so I, think I, I can I answer that. I think I heard you were, you were asking who's waiting on what permit from the state. Is that correct? Yeah. So they, the school district has um, a need to get an operational stormwater permit. 
and to in order to do you know their parking improvements the improvements that they want to do to the school and also i think the access road as well and i i haven't been totally kept in the loop on that where they are at but i've been in communication with bill ford about the design um you know earlier on a few weeks ago and so i don't i assume that they're still waiting on getting that approval because that is kind of a kind of a lengthy process and I, I actually don't know if they've submitted that permit or if it's you know under review right now, but I, I assume it's either submitted or under review, but not not approved, I wouldn't imagine. Okay. Well, I, I have a question. You mentioned something about a three acre rule. And I some of the I just I, I can't remember all this. I didn't from. get that, did you? Andrew? I didn't get it. Sorry, it was difficult to hear you. Sir. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, you I believe you mentioned something about a three-acre rule. Yep. Can you explain that to me? Because these parcels are under three acres, especially now that they're owned by two separate entities, the school and the fire department. Right. And and so this was it was a little bit of a unique one, and and early on in the project. Um, Pam and I and some others on the team, we had some discussion with DEC about this one because the fire station leases the land. And so it, it collectively, if you look at the whole parcel, including the fire station plus the school, there is more than three acres of, in, of existing impervious surface. And that is what the trigger is for this future three acre rule. So it doesn't really matter that there's these two entities on this one. So the state, Kind of made made the made the final decision that hey this is going to be one of these three acre sites. And I'll chime in on that. the The good news is that um, the state is going to provide funding for schools to um, meet the three acre permit requirements. And so even though they're going to need a stormwater permit to pave, correct me if I'm wrong, Andres, because I get this wrong every time I try to explain it. Um, but they need, the, they need the permit for um, paving their parking lot, but they also need the three acre permit. And this treatment will essentially satisfy both permits. Yeah. Um, so it's a little confusing as to why do they need a three acre permit when they have to have this stormwater permit also. It's the, the three acre permit is, is for the collective impervious surfaces on the entire parcel, which is greater than three acres. It's not just for paving that parking lot. So that's why the two permits are needed, but the treatments, both treatments will satisfy the, the requirements of the three acre permit collectively. Yeah. Um, and because, and like Andre says, because the fire station land is technically leased um you know the only piece that's actually owned by the fire station is the building itself where the rest of the property is owned by the school district so really the the owner of um that three acre impervious surfaces it's it's kind of a collective owner because it includes the building and <laughs> the parking lot of the fire station and all the impervious surfaces of the school so it's, it's a little funky it's a funky parcel um, and there's little, you know, there's all kinds of um, property ownership all over the state that is like this, that the state didn't think about, but they are working with engineers and with the owners to figure out the best scenario to treat the three acres. And we have shared this with the program to make sure that it would meet the requirements. And I think the permit actually came out today, Andres, I think it's. The three acre permit? Yeah, I, think Seriously? I, I saw an announcement, yeah. So, wow. stay tuned. Thank you both. Any other questions? Nope. I'm set there. No other questions from here. <laughs> Thank you very much, Pam and Andres. Absolutely. Thank you, Doug. Appreciate everything. Pre thanks for putting up with us. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Stay safe. So there's three acres of impervious surface there. You've got the school building itself. 
paving of the parking lot and the fire station and its paved lot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's three acres? Well, on, on this on this one right here, uh, under Berlin Elementary, impervious cover managed 1.37, impervious cover managed 1.35, for a total drainage area of 2.72. So close, close, but not yeah, over. on that one. And then for the other ones, it shows you on the next page where it looks like the chimney sweep spot's about 7.92 in total drainage area. Yeah, there's 0.81 with the fire department. And we have that on that chimney sweep page. Putting them over there, but not treating them as separate. There. Yeah. That's too. We're not over by much, are they? Mm. Any other discussion on this? Hearing none. Um, road pavement repair, non-sealed bids for Fisher Road, Dana? Yes, um, we have a, uh, Fisher Road has an area where that repair was a few weeks ago, about 70 by 50 um, to be paved, and we did send out a non-sealed bid on it. Um, for the paving costs, and we did receive one bid uh, for fifteen thousand nine hundred ten dollars. Um, it's this is from ST Paving in Waterbury. Uh, they estimate using eighty six tons at one hundred eighty five dollars a ton. That bid also includes traffic control and everything else. Yes. All inclusive. Yeah, traffic control. Oh no, I'm sorry. Road to be closed. Traffic control is not included. How long, is it, how long would it be in close for? Um, I think they're saying that, Tim, do you have any idea of how long it would be? Um, probably won't be a whole day. I would say maybe, I'll say a prepped. day just to be. It's got to be prepped, it's got to be dug out. They're going to put three inch lift in there, two, one and a half inch lifts. Who is prepping at Highway? Yeah, I told them I could do it. Save some money. Okay. So he knew this when he gave this price. Mm -hmm. okay. So the question would still be traffic control. No. Um, no well, he's no. they're they're, they're uh, uh, suggesting that the road be closed okay. for no it's, more than a day. It, it's just a total. When we go down there to fix what's there now, the gravel, it's just a total nightmare. Yeah. And there's no way the control is, is to get that yeah. out of there. Have trucks in there getting that stuff loaded to get it out of the way. Yeah. I mean, we can haul it away with our trucks and haul it up here to the yard, but and then then paving, and you're going to have to let it cool enough so that they can put the traffic over onto it if if there was traffic. And this way, they can just do it, and then by the time they get it all done, the first side will be cooled enough so they can go back and put the top. On. So we would have to know about it far enough in advance so we could get the word out. Gets beside each other. Yeah. Do we know when they would be able to do it? I uh, don't know. He didn't know for sure. They're in this area, paving, so he didn't say for sure. But you don't think it would be like late fall? Something seems to be oh, happening no, with the zoom. It, it, it bounces us right out and back in. Area. Not sure why. It like loses connection. Oh. They, they, Done a bunch over here to make a wood. They got some to do for Phil Scott. Well, well, I don't know. <laughs> a couple other places. That was SG paving. SG. 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 Yeah, I just I just saw them. They just finished on Black Road. Yep. Private driveway. Um, Fifteen thousand. Nine ten. If they have eighty six tons at one hundred eighty five dollars a ton. And that doesn't include any of the prep materials? I don't even know what they look like. It's tall gravel. So all you gotta dig is dig it down three inches so you get a total of three inch lift in there. And if you don't go that thick, it won't hold up. Right. Right traffic. Yeah, good point. Dana, you are the only person who's on. Yeah, I, I realize that. Well, Dana, since there's no other bids. 
Yeah. You want to go with that one? Is there a motion? To What's go? the board's pleasure? I make a motion to go with uh, ST paving or fifteen thousand nine hundred and ten dollars for an official road job. Second the motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. The motion is to accept the bid from ST Paving of Waterbury to pave a 50 by 70 foot section of Fisher Road that was caused by the road repair a few weeks ago. Um, 86 tons of material at $185 a ton for 15,910. Um, yes, we did. Yeah. Thank you. That was the only bid. That was the only bid date. Okay, so we're ready for the, thank you. Ready for the next one. <laughs> uh, Tim Davis, Winter Sand. Got a price from Barron's where we got it last year. They went up a quarter of the yard. And Jeff Newton's going to truck it for the same price as he did last year. Six dollars a yard. And um, the pages won't bid. Or they won't give you a price because they won't guarantee you that they can give you what you want for the same the amount or the quality. And Larry Hebert's sand isn't worth buying because it's not sand. So we've gone through that two years and had nothing but mud every time it warmed up a little bit. We had to go out and fix the mud because it's topsoil more than it is sand. So, so we went with Barron's last year and they went up 25 cents, but Jeff's going to hold his price of trucking at the same as what he was last year. So it will be the total increase in price. Um, How many yards do you usually have? 5,000. How much? 5,000. 5,000 yards. So you're talking about what? $1,200. So I'm new to town. <laughs> did, we, did we put out a bid? Did we put something in the paper? How do we do this in Berlin? I know in Northfield we put out in paper and give everyone a chance to bid around. No, nobody bids. We used to when we had bids. Nobody bids. Um, and that would be a, the best way to do it. However, we have in the past three or four years, Tim, I guess, we have not received, received people bid. aren't really interested in bidding. Because um, LePage's won't bid because his old is... They don't want to be committed. His story is, is that his equipment's old. If it breaks, he's not going to be able to get it to us. And then he signed a contract and he's going to be liable and he could get sued and he doesn't want any part of it. And then we and did a vendor in Williamstown yeah. and his product was inferior. Um, and he was higher in it. We had a lot of problems with that product. He's... he's was eight nine dollars last year so who knows what it's gonna be this year. And the average is eight dollars. And it only costs a dollar more a yard to get a call from Baron than it did So it's not the same. You get a better product for about a wash. Hmm? You get better product on oh, a lot better product. We, for the same we we didn't have the mud that we always have. Yeah. And this is the first year, last year was the first year that we've used it. We just didn't get that slime every time it warmed up. And when we graded this spring, it didn't, it, it didn't, when it rained, it didn't turn to mud. Because you got, you know, you got the sand on the road the first time around grading and then until you get it mixed in with the gravel. But before we had mud up the yin yang. Is there any reason to rot like, to buy it now, or would a delay be potentially smart? I mean, like. Well, you got to get delivered. Right, before snow flies. And the problem, I, would, the problem Tim, is we wouldn't that be buying it now, not until no. next 
finding it won't be, next it won't be until year. after July. You're just saying they want a commitment. Because everybody buys from Barron's. Mortown, Warren, Waitsfield, Middlesex, uh, Waterbury, City of Montpelier. So they got a ton of customers, so you got to get on the list so that you are going to get it in time before winter. And we did this last year, and it was here, and we were done stockpiling over there before October, or the first part of October we were done. When did they start bringing it in last year? I thought it was later when we talked about it. It was. It was. Yeah, it was I, I want to say it was October or November. Um, the other two pits in the area <coughs> don't bid. The one, in, the one in West Berlin. Tucker's? No. No, they, no. I know they, they have never been since I've been here in seven years. They don't. Make, they don't want to deal with that. They don't have the sand. Okay. Their sand is nothing but silt. Yeah. And, and they know that it's not road sand. You gotta have some stone in it, and their sand is just theirs is more like wash sand. And gross, gross is way higher. He's like ten dollars and something a yard. We checked with them. Oh yeah. Yep. Yeah. But he didn't even bid last year. Hmm. And then it's ten dollars and something, and it was five fifty a yard to get it trucked here. We used to have three or four that would bid, mm -hmm. and don't do it no more. Now it doesn't happen. Well, the pages. The page, he won't. He won't bid. He doesn't want to commit. What's the other one? Uh, McCullough. McCullough. They used to bid. But they don't have the sand now either. They've yeah. they've run out of their sand in South Berry and and the pit in uh, Gallus. They can't haul out of there that much. They supply the town of East Gallus. That's about all they're allowed to haul out of there. They got a limit on what they can take out of that pit when it comes to sand. They don't have much material left out there. Anymore. Is, is Barron who Northfield goes through as well? What's that? Is Barron who Northfield goes through? They did last year. They did last yep. year. And we bought 5,000 yards last year. How much did we use? Uh, we probably yeah. used all 5,000. Well, I had to buy some this spring. We got all. How much do you think we have stockpiled right now? Um, maybe 1,000. Fifteen hundred. We can, we can uh, like the winter before we had hardly any left over there yeah. last year because part of the problem is 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 the better the sand is the less you use because when you when you had that other stuff you put it down it wasn't sand it was more topsoily cars packing on it turned right to ice this stuff don't do that this is this is what you want to call real sand. And the other trouble is you never know what the winter's going to be. No. The winter before, we didn't have any left. We had to buy that year, and we didn't have any left to speak of. Maybe, maybe 400 yards left. So do they hold their price if we need more in the spring? Oh, yeah, she doesn't change. She only changes her price once a year. First, well, I don't know when we got new price list here just last month, I guess. But. So you, did you just reach out and email people, or did you just reach out to Darren, or how did that work? Um, Jeff's the only one that's hauled it, and he's holding his price, and the policy was if you hold your price, it, the trucking didn't go out to bed. And I just let him know, and he schedules everything with her. It's right. Everyone that owns it. Right, so you reached out, you sent it out to Barron's, and it looks like you're there. Well, the place we got that's why I'm here tonight, because I talked with Jeff the other day, and he said that we really needed to find out what's going on so that we could get on the schedule and make sure. And it'd be paid for in the new fiscal year? Mm -hmm. Not this year. When it, you probably won't haul it until July or August. And in that 
budget line item, we have enough to cover the increase? Yes. We, well, I have. I had. I had almost twelve thousand dollars left last year, and I spent a little bit this spring because we got low. And we used all we had brought in. Mm -hmm. okay. cost less the truck right now. I've never gone over the same budget over. It's not even close. You see, no money left over. Mm -hmm. I don't believe we increased it the last two years. Stayed the same. We had seventy thousand dollars, and then gone over that. And what you're hoping is that you're consistent at five thousand yards. Oh yeah, there, I mean, there's some, there's some over there. Because if you get a if you get a bad winter and a lot of ice, you can go through sixty five hundred easy. But like I said. The sand is so much better, you don't use as much. It's got more stone in it than everybody else. It doesn't, doesn't get, doesn't ice over. That's, that's the main problem. Is it icing over? This stuff don't do that. So what they, 825 a yard, right? Huh? They said 825 a yard? 8 a yard. It was 775 okay. last year, it went up to 8 dollars. So it's 70,000. Between trucking and oh, between trucking. How much? Seventy thousand. That's how much it is. Between trucking and sand, it's six dollars a year in the truck, there, right? So, how much do we have in that line item? Do you know? Thank you. Yeah. So, uh, you find seven, out. Was it seven thousand? Yeah, seventy thousand. Fuels half of what it was for that expense for trucking now. Yeah, but that ain't gonna stay that way for long. <laughs> I wish it would. <laughs> I know. I don't know. I have burned this stuff. Sand other than uh, seventy thousand, Justin. My other one in there is gross. That's well, gross is is over ten dollars. He quoted me a price last year of nine fifty a yard in Barry. And quite a few towns used to buy from him because it's you know it's close and local. Right now, the only one I know is buying from him is East Montpelier. Plainfield stopped buying from him. Because he, he, if something happens, what happened was his generator burned up on him, so he shut down. And then they were out, they didn't get their sand. So we didn't put this out. We didn't put, I'm just trying, this isn't, I'm just trying to get clarification. We didn't put it out to bed. Nope. Right. Haven't for three years now. I thought we had to, with the, for like the sand itself, maybe not the trucking no, or whatever. No, the sand. Put the sand out to bed, at least attempt to. Well, there's always a caveat in there that the board can decide not to. I mean, the policy is anything over five thousand that goes out to bid. That's why I just wanted a clarification on that. But at, at the same time, if if um, uh, if you look at uh, what Tim is saying, you got to look at quality of the product. Even though you may have a low bid. You're not saving yourself, or you're not doing yourself any favor by buying it. Right. I'm not talking about whether that. Or I'm just talking about the actual whether it needs to go to bed or not. That's yeah. all. I understand that you can say the select board has the decision. They can make that decision. But yes, you're right. We normally put that out to bid as per. So the thing to remember here is you can put it out to bid, but you have somebody who is going. Well, I mean, if you look at just the uh, the tailgate price. That they're asking at the pits now, you're still going with a uh, with a uh, fairly low bid on the um, with the eight dollars because Tim is saying gross is ten dollars. He has a good problem. And then you've got um, 
the other fellow who has an inferior product. Right. And that's it. How much does it cost us to put it out to bid, Dan? Just the advertising, really, at the Times Argus. Otherwise, yeah. it doesn't, you know, that's in 100 bucks or whatever it is for the yeah. advertising. Yeah. yeah. The only active mic is in your office. So whatever they're saying in the other room, there's nothing there to pick it up. Okay. Um, I can't help you, Dave. I, I'm, I give up. <laughs> I'll move you over here. Maybe you'll hear. Can you hear us better now, Dave? Yes. What do we want to do? Well, what's the board's pleasure? You, if you want to put it out to bid, we need to do it right off. If you want to go with uh, Tim's recommendation, then we just need to let them know. My normal sense is to go out to bid, um, hearing from the highway foreman, hearing, it sounds like all the towns in the area are using them. Um, it leads me to believe that there aren't any other towns bidding. Or I mean, there aren't any other companies bidding. There's no competition there. Everyone's going with the same company. I mean, there's... Well, there's a limit of, there's, there's not many pits around anymore. Yeah, right, that's, that's right. And I think, problem. yeah. yeah. It's, they run out. It's, I mean, Pike has a ton of sand there at the bottom of Corey Hill, but you can't use it. Yes, it's absolutely no good. The road sand, they yeah. use it in their lot mix. But. And Tucker has never been since I've been here. Seven years, he's never been. And they, I appreciate hearing the. Huh? I was just going to say, I appreciate hearing the it's qual quality product. Yes, it's And you've got good. their commitment. And you've worked with them before. Now, I don't even know if she bids. I don't, because none of them other towns are bid there. Mm -hmm. There's only one other good pet, and that's Menashe's in Morrisville. Um, trucking kill you. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. yeah. the trucking is quite a ways to Bolton, because that's right. where the pit is, but it's all interstate, so. I mean, they're back and forth here pretty quick mm -hmm. when they're hauling. Have a motion? I'll make a motion to go with Barron's. Here a second? I'll second that. Any further discussion? With that motion, are you willing to go with uh, uh, Steve Smith or uh, Newton? Newton's for trucking too. Oh, I thought it was a package deal. Yeah. yeah it uh, is. It yeah. is. Okay. Uh, no further discussion. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, we'll go with. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for a good explanation. Thanks, Tim. Definitely, yeah. Tim. Yeah. Tim. It was Appreciate helpful to it. have you here so we could. Well, that's why I wanted to come in. I mean, I'm leaving. Yeah. So, <laughs> where are you going? Missouri, New York. Okay, uh, next is the acceptance of the hazard mitigation plan. Yes, that has just gotten approved by emergency management and is now waiting this for you to uh, bless it. We had the draft a few months ago and um, there were no changes to the draft. What, when did, at what meeting did we get the hazardous mitigation plan? I don't remember seeing it. Um, I don't remember off the top of my head, but I can go look. Well, the only reason I ask is, was it before I came onto the board in March? If so, I just want a little time it, to review it. Could it could have, because we had the gentleman come a few times, so it probably was before March. Would have been before you. Uh, I can abstain if all of you are comfortable with it. It's not a big deal to me. I just don't want to vote on it if I haven't <laughs> it seen it. it. Understandable. Yeah. I'll move to approve the... Uh, hazard mitigation plan. And I'll second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I take it Angelina isn't with us right now. I think she gave up, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Motion well, carries. Seen. Motion carries, thank you. <laughs> um, can I ask a question? Are we sure all set with SP Paving? is still here. 
Oh, good. What's that? We're all set with L ST paving, right? Yep. Because yeah. I've got to call him and find out when he's going to be able to come here, so I got equipment here to do what I got to do. Yep. Yeah, we voted on it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Tim. Because our estimator's down to Jonesbrook right now, so I'll have to go back up here so I can get that out. Thank you, Tim. As he said that if I did the, the digging and the prep work, that part of it would save Tim quite a bit of money. Yep. Fantastic. Awesome. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you. Have a good night, Tim. You too. Okay, so uh, discussion on re uh, proposed budget reductions. I put that on as a placekeeper. Um, you had discussed it a little bit at one of your meetings. I think it was the last meeting, and didn't know if you want to take any further action now or if you wanted to take a wait and see attitude. Well, I'm curious what, I'm just curious, like the uh, actual equipment cost, fuel costs right now. Do you know if there's been a decrease in the fuel spending substantially or what percentage or what? So you're talking about gasoline or diesel? The equipment, diesel, equipment fuel. I'm going to have that purple book. Yep. Um, I um, was going to print you guys a... Um, we, I'd send an oil sample out for the grader, yep. and it's done. They emailed it back to me today, but I can't get my printer to print. So I'm going to work on that tomorrow and see if I can figure out what's wrong with it. But I've got a, a thing analyzing that oil in the grader. Okay. And you can forward the email to the still if you want, probably. Yeah. But... It didn't, it won't print, I don't know what's going on over there. So, and tires. If we're not gonna get a grader, we're gonna have to buy some tires. Because yep. we're, we're showing metal fabric yep. in the front ones. How are the rear ones? Pretty bad. All you do is spin, yep. spin, spin, spin. So, if, if probably, we're probably not gonna purchase a grader Right. What's the cost per tire? It's eight eighty three hundred for tires. For tires. Yeah, and that's state no, no, no. four, four tires. Four tires. Oh, six okay. tires. Okay. Six <laughs> tires. Four of the tires. Six, six of them. Yeah, no, and that's six state six price. Tires. That's state price. So you're okay. not gonna get them any cheaper. Eighty six hundred for all six. Uh, I think it was eighty three hundred for all six. Yeah. And then what? I mean, let's like a second. What did the uh, what did that sample look like? Oh, I don't know. I can't print it. Oh, you couldn't even open it? No. Okay. Oh. Oh, I figured you could open it. That's all. Right. Well, no. It's, it just said, click on here to print your results. And I clicked on there, and it won't print. So. Oh, gotcha. That makes sense. So. <laughs> but I'm going to figure it out tomorrow morning, and then I'll get it straightened out. Very good. So. Thank you. So I've got the okay to get tires, because we need them badly. I would say you're going to have to help them anyway. Yeah, because yeah. they're not, they, I mean, I, they're not going to get, the front ones aren't going to get through the summer. Yeah. Now, now we're getting some decent weather. We're going to, we got a lot of grading to do. That's like total yeah. necessity. My only thought, you, you guys do a great job grading. I love it. Um, my only thought is if the, if the oil comes back as we have major problems, then we just spent $8,300. Right. All for nothing if we did need a new grader, right? I, I, well, yeah, I guess. Well, that's what I'm getting at. Yeah, let's just that's see what I'm getting at. If, if, if let's the just oil thing, yeah. Okay. I mean, what and do you think? I, I, would I agree with you. That. I Absolutely. agree with you. Yeah. But and then if it comes back, will they have to, any repair options or what? They'll give us an idea. Of well, it it's problems, got a lot of hours on it. That's what they're going to tell you. Yeah. If no, there's, well, if there's problems in the oil, <laughs> don't bother repairing. Right. No. There's not going to be any. Well, no. you can repair it, but it's going to be so expensive. Right. And you're still going to have a 10-year-old have grader? No, try 14 years old. 14-year-old grader. Norfield went through this. They rebuilt their motor, and then they then... Wish they hadn't? Yeah, because they've dumped another almost 30000 into it after they spent fifty to put a new motor in it. So, I mean, when they get... That, that piece of equipment is the hardest work piece of equipment we got. It works hard. Did you answer your question, Justin? 
Uh, in, this, in December, we were paying $2.38 a gallon for diesel, and right now we're between $1.40 to $1.52. Wow. Yeah. So that is substantial. Yeah, so it's to maintain that, that equipment fuel is going to be better than we anticipate, too. Have you found out any more on the culverts or anything, Dana? The culvert for, was it Richardson Road? I'm sorry. You said possible negotiation for lower cost culvert replacement for Richardson Road. Have you, you probably don't have any additional I information don't, no. on that, do you? No, I don't. Have you heard anything more from the uh, engineer? Um, I have talked to the engineer, um, and that's about what I've heard from. So I don't have anything as far as that. I have applied for a grant on Richardson Road, um, but I don't have that either. In the stimulus bill that's being debated now, um, there's a fairly large chunk for local mun municipalities, wasn't there? And I, I didn't. I just saw the the bullet points, but I'm I'm pretty sure there was a large portion for municipalities. Um, I'm not sure. Was it was there some strings attached to it though that oh, there it, always it had is. to do with the? <laughs> oh, there always is. Nothing yeah. is for But it had to do with being caused by the uh, pandemic, didn't it? It wasn't there. Wasn't that part of it? Um, I don't know how. The first it one, the CARES Act. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just not sure about the second one. I just think I can check that out. I John. think we should just continually watch those because they're going to at some point try to get everyone going again, you know, and boost the money. I do watch those, out. but I haven't seen any really that apply to us yet. Okay. Um, Are there any other funds in the state that would be used for something like this? Especially if that's the only... Uh, there may be an emergency. There may be an emergency fund. Um, Shauna did mention something about that when I was talking to her about Lover's Lane Bridge. And since Richardson Road is actually more critical, um, and I and I do believe that Richardson Road could wait another year. I would rather it get finished because we've been talking about it a long time. Richardson so, or uh, Lovers Lane? Uh, Richardson. Yeah, Richardson. Well, you think Richardson could wait another year? I think it could wait another year if we can't if we can't get funding, yeah. or if it's more than what we can afford to pay. And then our engineer doesn't stay up to speed. I mean, they're not doing, they don't do any of those, uh, see them where funding or emergency funding, or they don't give any advice on that at all. Or, you know, like. I haven't had a lot of success with this engineer. Okay. Um, in doing it. When we were using Otter Creek, um, they really helped us out. They know. Um, this one is like, you know, um, I certainly can, you know, try and work with him, and, and I have explained to him we want this repaired. Oh, yeah. um, I just didn't know. Because. He was the same. I mean, the uh, and there's been a lot of ideas as far as uh, slip lining the the culvert that might save us some money or so forth. But I think we should be ready to go, and I'm hoping that if they slip lined it, that we're talking a lot less cost than what to replace it. And the hydraulics, that's been done, so it could be slip line. There's enough capacity to do that. For engineers, was a little bit. So. <laughs> so I guess I just need to be more vigilant about chasing the engineer so he gets so sick of me that he comes across. Does it, yeah. yeah well, okay. the, the other idea is Karen Horn probably stays fairly up to date on what's coming out uh, from sure. these bills. So yeah. she may have a good grasp on what's available and whether it. or not there's yeah. municipal money. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Anything else on the uh, budget reductions? Okay. So, uh, so I, can you keep this agenda item on the for the next agenda? Sure. Next That's, meeting? I'm just holding it as a placeholder for you. Yeah. So Very I good. will do that. Uh, let's see here. Nothing else on this? If not, uh, town administrator report, Dana? 
Yes, I have a couple things. Um, uh, one, as you know, we've still had the project going on in the, the new downtown. And the consultant that is working on that, Brandy Saxton, uh, again, Brandy is being paid from a grant, plus there is money in the FY21 budget to pay the difference. Um, so she has got a tool online that you can go online and design the town center you want. They've been trying to promote this, the planning board and Brandy. And they're looking for quotes from Berlin officials, hopefully positive. And so she's asking <laughs> the, the select board if they would want to add a quote onto this page that she's working with. Oh, that's, I went to a planning commission meeting. That's the woman, yeah. Yeah, you met her probably. Oh, yeah. 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 She was also the same woman that did the zoning. Right. Yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> so... Shall I make up a quote for you? Yes, needy. Um, <laughs> positive. Yeah. Okay. Um, I just, I mean, just I don't like to do it without yeah. If you need help with the positivity, Flo is available. Usually yeah. at the That's end of the day. <laughs> <laughs> She's great with that stuff. I trust you'll do a great job. Why don't you just run it by her first, Dana? Yeah. <laughs> I'll run it by you, Flo. Yeah. No need. You'll do a yeah. fabulous job. You can take there you a, go. Uh, put something together and just. Sure. Have, I, I, but I just wanted you to know yep. if you saw that online, what you said. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, and then I have, um, there were some minutes that um, I think I sent to you, the Planning Commission, um, and Public Works was in there. Flo, I know that you've been going to the Public Works mm -hmm. board. Um, I sent a thank you letter to Wayne Lamberton because he was very generous and put up shields for Rosemary and Corinne. That's excellent. Which was very nice. Uh, tomorrow, Tim and his crew are coming and we're moving furniture in Corinne's part of the office so that we can use that window. Um, we have actually on our side of the fence, if you will. Uh, Diane has been waiting on customers to take tax payments. They don't come in, but she's been, they've come to her door and she's been dealing with them. And anyone that we've had, most people we haven't needed to see in person, but if we had, we have waited on them. Um, I don't believe the clerk is open. I'm hoping that once we have this window open, that that will help that situation out. Have you figured out how to take uh, any idea how much it's going to cost to take and uh, put that shelf in there? Um, Tim said that his crew could do it, and okay. so I think we'll get through with that. We do need to buy a new location for the bulletin board. I'm thinking of an outside bulletin board because on the side of the building or something like that. Yeah. Um, that window, they're going to make it so it's safe so no one's going to get their hand taken off, but it is a double, a heavy double hung window of the old fashioned variety. So I think we'll just see how that works out. And if not, maybe buy a newer window, like a... Well, the thing with it is, I mean, you know, to hold the window up, like, needs a block of wood here. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. Or you can take <laughs> and have a, a sliding bolt right. on the side of it. Right. And you have, you don't think that there's no problems keeping it down because you can always put a lock on the top. So. You could put, I suppose, yeah, block off the top. Yeah, so yeah. that should, yeah. should be able to get that done for the 500. Oh, I would think, I would hope yeah. so. Um, you know, we do have a little supply of masks. We have a supply of, of cleaner. Um, the staff has been wanting to buy um, thermometers. Um, I would rather not getting into taking people's temperature. Um, I think they're still very hard to find. And they are, you know, um, I, I, get, I haven't gone that far, but mm -hmm. you're probably mm -hmm. right. You gotta get pretty close to someone before you can take their temperature. <laughs> probably. You know, in all seriousness, I think, you know, 
I think the sign on the door saying you must wear a mask, you know, you have to, you know, if you have right. any of these symptoms, you know, we have the, the, the signage that you need to put on the door, um, and if someone's sick, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, you know, but, but I, I kind of don't think a temp, um, no. thermometer is necessary. Plus, I can't pitch it myself. I'm not a medical person trying to do it. We want to approve the warrants. Um, is everybody yeah. fine with them too? And yeah. also, before I oh. before I'm done, um, several weeks ago, you approved reappointing several people to committees, and I did not send these to you because there's so many of them. But if we could sign. Start them. away. That's all I have for us. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dana. Uh, warrants. Hello. Make a motion to approve general fund accounts payable warrant number 20G21 with checks 2199 to 2228 in the amount of $52,002.55. Also pay payroll warrant 20-23 for payroll from April 26, 2020 to May 9, 2020 paid on May 13, 2020 in the amount of $36,388.75, along with the April journal entries, the April budget status report and trial balance, and the April reconciled bank statements for general fund sewer commission and the water division, and delinquent tax report as of May 14, 2020. Here a second. I'll second that. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, motion carries. Uh, round table, Justin. Brad, could we well, we'll go oh, yeah, on the fact that could, could we talk about the... Yep. Um, Highway Superintendent position. Um, one idea I had had was to delay hiring a Highway Superintendent. Um, so I guess, first of all, I'm looking for advice whether you think that's a good idea or if we should go forward with the applicant and arrange interviews for the applicants that we have. I know, Brad, you had thought it was not a good idea to delay. Well, I just, I mean, all it's going to take is one storm. And you're going to be down a van, and roads are going to be need to be repaired, yada, yada. Um, I understand the cost savings. I mean, that's, yeah. But as far back as I can remember, we've always had a four-man road crew. And to maintain the roads in an acceptable manner, I think you're going to need the whole four-man crew. Granted, I mean, the equipment's a lot better than it was. We used to have just six-wheel dump trucks, and yeah. now we have yeah. ten wheels with bigger capacities, but even so. You had some experience before, didn't you, before Tim came without a highway superintendent? Where, wasn't the town down we had, a we person? Had, well, we had uh, Gary Markham was acting, but he had been on the job since he got out of high school. Sure, yeah. And he knew the roads, he knew the equipment, he knew the, he knew the people he was working with. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there was no... Uh, mm -hmm. But even so, um, he only, we only were down a man for a month or so. Right, oh, okay. All right, I thought it was It, it wasn't yeah. a long-term thing. Okay. Well, I think he's run into potential issues too. He's having the interim situation without having clear direction, and obviously. Can't and I was going to say, I think that would be an issue. Um, yeah. You have a very good crew, but I think that um, I don't see. Like any the crew's only good as a leader. Right, and if there's no leader, yeah. I mean, you have to have a point person. Yeah. I personally think we should move forward with the interviews and process and make a decision then if well plus the fact you you've uh, you've uh, got these people who are interested i'm assuming that the ones you've vetted are experienced I, i've sent you all the ones that i've received 
and obviously there are very um, levels of experience. Um, but I wanted you to see all of them because there weren't all that many. This one says Jeremy Vincent. There's no John Quinn on it. Just There's no John your, Quinn? Just for your awareness. So the, all the other ones oh are right. God. Good help is so hard to find. I'll blame my secretary for that one. Um, so um, I did. Have you done any of the uh, backgrounds yet? No, I haven't. I wanted to talk to. I wanted to talk about how you wanted to do that. I, I can do that this week, so that's not an issue. There, I did have. Um, John had asked me to do a scoring sheet, which I I did one, um, sure. and he has given me his back. But if you if the board would like to do that, that would be helpful. Plus, then I would need. Is the board want to be involved to, in the interview process? And the initial interview. Dana is asking if the board wants to be involved in the interview process for the highway foreman. Certainly, I think it'd be good if one of us wanted to at least. Mm -hmm. you know. I mean, if not, the whole board may be. Is a, a, I'd be willing to be involved. I mean, is there a liaison to the highway? Yep. Yes, there is. And who would that be? I believe it's that gentleman over Why? there. Yeah. We have a volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> See how that works, David? <laughs> That's why you're a chairman. You know what? I was just waiting for you to come up with that. Yeah. Uh, if, uh, hello. <laughs> so would would that mean that we would do the initial interview? We would make a short list. I would, we would say, bring it I would, to you. I would, I would vet them and see where where the experience levels are, and then, uh, of course, I mean you can always talk to them and get a get a little feel of what kind of a person they are. We have, I mean, well, why don't you let Justin and me meet? Yeah. And we'll we'll figure it out. We'll, we'll weed their own. And, yeah. Yeah. And then we'll be back. Form a plan. Yeah. See what we like. And we may need to ask for a special meeting to sure. do that. Thank you. Anything else? No. Um, no. Thank you very much, Dana. Yeah. Uh, round table, Justin? There's something I can't remember. Oh, we had an ongoing sheet. You know, you'd save the spot for the budget. Yep. That sheet did right after. We're going to keep going this year with the things we had kind of in limbo hanging out there. Yeah, let me, I'll bring that back to you. Can you put you. that in our I'm face sorry, the been, meeting? That's like that's that's that was, yeah. Is that like your to-do list? Dave? That's my to-do list. Well, it's, our, it's all our to-do list. And it, and it, it, but it keeps us focused on <laughs> what needs to be done. <laughs> uh, anything else? Uh, no, I think that's... Oh, yeah, just like we... I don't know if you guys got the email, but we... Deck, put some temporary decking over that bridge on Irish Shelf. I don't know if you saw oh, that. I did. Oh, I did. No, good. Yeah. So I went up there and put some 5 8 plywood over there. Met with uh, Bill. Tom Willard was there. Mm -hmm. Josh Walker went and helped me. Um, so that's that's great. Yeah. So temporary. They still want a new bridge, and all the the, beef, the vice president from Vast was there as well. Yeah. Um, and so Vast did say they were willing to get yeah, yeah. labor, you know, which is huge. Um, cause I think their yeah, labor or the equipment or just labor? We can get the equipment down there too. Um, I mean, basically, what you're going to need down in there is probably an excavator of some size. No, I don't think you do, because they were just going to redeck the steel that was there. How wide is that? It's not wide enough. So we reached out to, I talked to Beaver Coro. Well, Steve Carl, um, from they, they actually own Gillespie's. He's got some I beams as well over at his house. He's supposed to measure up. Yeah. Uh, Jamie Bullduck also said he did when I reached out to him. He's a friend of mine. Yeah. So, you know, they came to us with five thousand um, dollars. I think if we coordinated it, uh, that was that was not just material cost. That was some labor involved too. Mm -hmm. So I think with the free labor that we can get. Um, we would probably be able to do it about the same to where you could actually fit 
some sort of like tractor or something across there too because that's I mean if people are going to be using it and there's going to be maintenance it would also be good to be able to get equipment across over there if there is a washout or something for repairs so I haven't heard back from Phil or Tom but they are um, they're going they, as far as I knew they were going to have a meeting they had to have some discussion about uh, there was a section of it where there was uh, I think it's because of the current use maybe you know, that was more pertaining to like past or whatever, if that's yeah. What about, have you talked to anything with VASA? VASA, so I think the problem with VASA, honestly, is that VASA may do it, but they don't have any connector. So this is just approved for snowmobiles. Yep. And I think that you might have issues once you get over into this section, especially with ATVs and side-by-sides. So I didn't talk to VASA at all um, because I, right now, the way I left it, and actually Steve's the trail master for the Northfield clubs. Yeah. If we could somehow get over to, uh, over to Tucker's gravel pit, which would either be through Riverton or yeah. over the closed loaders lane bridge, um, we could tie in and be all the way into Waitsfield. So we tie it all in. That's that's with Vast or Vast? Vast. Vast. And well he can do it. He can over there he can get he can do that all on side by side too, which is pretty yeah. amazing. Um, so the problem from here would be like I don't know, I mean you could probably open up this piece, it's probably worth pursuing, but those aren't official trails yet. He yeah. he he's worked with landowners over there and he's got permission and he's developing that. So I think for for right now, the uh, the way the trail systems are set up, we can either tie in over by Ellie's somewhere or down in Riverton, or we're supposed to go up on that mountain um, and see because we could come out up maybe on Turkey Hill. Yep. Uh, you know, you know where that is. So, so there's an old road, and I actually called John to find out where the town road came out when we were up there the other day. I took a ride last Saturday. I um, went up on Turkey Hill and found where the old town road comes in and all that. So, which ties in right up there. So you that I just think that if if you know the only section is a section of black road that's holding us up, obviously, to make that all work, and you're not going to get a lot of buy-in from Vast even unless that's available for them. Yeah. Because that's a big connection piece. You want to be careful of those old town roads because a lot of those were thrown up. The trails. In, uh, tw I think it was about twenty sixteen. Yeah, that's what our some mm -hmm. of our trails. Wasn't there one that went behind Wheeler's house? An old town trail. I have no idea. Because that's where it used to connect. Was it would come down behind Wheeler's. And then we, you'd go through Riverton, and that's how you cross over there yeah. on the Chandler Road. Um, but I don't know if that's a thrown up trail or what it is. But yeah, no, the, Steve knows all that on his side. We just need yeah. to figure it out on our side. Yeah, because a lot of those old roads and old uh, right of ways that weren't used for anything, we just threw them up because it was a. Uh, well, it'd be on our recording. I think trail. we just have eight legal trails. Yeah. 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 So that's, all, that's all I got. I just wanted to give you an update. Hello? Nothing, thank you. John? I, I couldn't hear very well the other night when we had our uh, conference call or our meeting on Wednesday night. So I, I apologize for not being able to be here, but when did we decide the town offices were going to open? Well, we're going to open as soon as we get that window open, and that's going to be tomorrow. I can't speak to the clerk's office. Yeah, I mean, the, the rest of the building, if the town clerk is going to stay closed, I guess that's that's her prerogative but yeah. by law. But I, I want to make sure that we have... I want to make sure that we are, you know, available. And I know we are, but that the signage on the door at least, you know, lets them know how to 
how to communicate with us or that if they do want to, if they are going to come in, that they need to wear a mask. We have those. Whatever. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we have, we have those done. Okay. Because that's the only sign I saw on the door. Or that's basically the one I thought I saw. Yeah, well, that's not, that, you're right, that is what on the door now, but if we, when we open, I have a different sign that talks about, that I have it on my desk, actually, but it's the one that was put out by the state. Um, as far as if you're sick, don't come in. So you think tomorrow? If if they can get that move, sure. Well, I mean, you can open this part of the building tomorrow, no matter what. If they have it, so they can access the town clerk through the window. That would be true. And and we that have cut down some of know, the worries. We are going to get better signage so that people can go around and talk to Diane on the yeah. the other side. So that works out well. So I think it's not much of a problem for our side. Okay. Anything um, else, John? And then the only other thing I was going to mention was, you know, with a with such a small road crew, I agree that, you know, we need a foreman. Um, and that this, the changes, you know, that I'm really thinking about are more, are structural to how we do business. And that's why I, I was saying, you know, for the FY22 budget, it, a 10% did decrease and I think you know we should start now at looking at different options but it's going to take us a while to figure out like what the right well, surgical cuts are in order to I thought you were talking the FY21 budget you're saying 22? We, well, we, we were you were that, right. we originally it was the FY22 really okay so and then we we had talked about well we might as well start right now but I'm thinking you know for next year like we really need to plan ahead to figure out like here are the here are the cuts that we're going to make because this year's budget's been baked, it's been voted on, okay. and we should save money wherever we can sure. and and cut expenses to practice for the following year where, you know, who knows where we're going to be. Well, that would make sense because you're going to be a big part of of formulating that FY22 budget. Right. And so. Um, so I, I just wanted yeah, to kind of start. explain myself a little further on okay. what I, I was thinking. I appreciate that because I didn't realize. And making that. sure you know. Yeah. If we need the road foreman, we need the road foreman. Our roads are absolutely great in, in town compared to, you know, some other towns. So certainly appreciative of the work crew. And uh, I just want to make sure, you know, we're thinking about the cuts in the right way. And we're not. When we did this in Northfield, it wasn't about like, okay, we're going to cut everything out of our capital, capital expenditures and we're just not going to fund, you know, and put money away anymore. We looked at structural changes that would go on and on and on and slowly come back over time rather than we're taking 5000 out this year and next year we'll have to put 5000 in again to make up for it. You know, those types well, of so cuts. Well, so often that happens, yes. Right, um, and those yeah. are the cuts that I don't want because it doesn't yeah. really get right. us anywhere. Right, I understand. Okay, thank so, you. I yep. appreciate that. Yep. All set? Yep. I have nothing. Um, a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh -huh.